All right, Abu Bakr, the book that Chuck has chosen, Holmes, is a, a true story of, of, of your family's escape from violence, first in Iraq, then in Syria, to Edmonton, where you live now. Uh, what made you want to share your family's story? Uh, so moving from Iraq to Syria and from Syria all the way to Canada, which is a whole different world for me, I just recognized that there, there was a lot of people who doesn't really know much about the life in Syria and Iraq. And when I first came to the school, which is Highlands in Edmonton, uh, I got these questions. Do you guys have schools back home in Syria? Do you guys have chairs and stuff like that? <laughs> I'm like, yes, we do have. <laughs> But we don't have so much snow. <laughs> That's the only thing. <laughs> so that was really got my attention and I really wanted to do something for back home in Syria. Uh, and yeah, that's how it's become a secret wish for me. Chuck, what drew you to this book? You told me earlier today we had a chat that uh, Abu Bakr's life is not your life, that you don't share experiences. But why don't you tell us what, uh, what drew you to this book so, uh, so profoundly? Well, I mean, I think in this era that we are in right now with when you see like all the politicians talking about building w building walls and building, uh, you know, like using hate, hatred and, and racism to stoke fear and to basically just get votes and try to, you know, uh, it just felt like this was a story that had to be told. And I think that uh, we all get desensitized to the news and we all see this and we can't put a face or a name and this book actually does that and I think it makes us all it kind of it, it makes you also remember that uh, we live in a special place in Canada that where we actually welcome these people with open arms and that's that's a great thing and you know when you compare it to other countries and our, our neighbors of the south that are actually going the opposite route and I just feel that something special about this this country that does that and I would say finally for me it was just kind of being able to relate um, uh, as a father and just seeing that uh, just the love that a family can have for each other just just really made, it was a heartbreaking um, you know emotion in the book it was really special and Winnie this started off uh, Abu Bakr was your student in an English language class and this started off as an after-school project is that what it was or just an exercise well well, um, teachers are always trying to find a sneaky way of getting students to do a little bit of extra work. And so uh, worksheets weren't really working with helping him learn his English. And so um, when Abubakar said to me, I want to share my story, I thought, got him. And <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And so that was kind of how our star story began, is with him wanting to share with his classmates about why there were Syrian refugees in our school, in our community. I think, and if I can just add something, this is one of the best part of the book is when you're just about to leave for Canada. And, you know, we all think from our perspective, at least for me, it was like, oh, well, this is the great magical ending. He's getting to go to Canada. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. And in fact, in the book, it's probably one of the saddest moments, the most poignant part of the book where he's talking to his best friend and his cousins that are not coming with him. And as a 15 year old, a 16 year old boy, that's, that's your whole world, right? You play soccer with them, you play PlayStation every day. This is like, this, the whole world revolves around these people and you have to leave them behind. And you don't know when or even if you'll ever see them again. And that moment, it's, I think it's your cousin or your best friend that just says to you like, please tell her story. Make sure that people know what's going on there and make this work worth it you know by going out and being like the messenger so for me like to, to see how it started out as a you know like a, a school little project thing and then it's you know and then it was self-published and it, it and then it's now it's here and then it's going to be on on the air to think about the gigantic gigantic steps that this book has already taken and your life how much has changed and if you know, I mean, it reminds me of being like 15 years old and trying to be in a band and hoping my songs will travel to like Australia and South America one day. And like this, this is what's happening with this book. And it's uh, it's tra it's transformative. It's a life changing moment for for you and 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 for Winnie. And I just think it's just really awesome. And I'm just proud to be like a tiny little part of it. So that's what drew me to it. Baka, how do your how do your friends, family feel in Syria? Have you been in touch with people who who wanted you to 
tell all of your stories? Do, are they aware that this is, uh, this is happening? Well, my cousins in Turkey, they can't believe it went that far, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, others in Syria, they, they don't even ask me much about it, honestly. They, they, they can't believe that anyone would like to hear or know about them back in Syria. That's how it is like. That's how, how bad things were there. You took it as a responsibility to tell their story? Yes, I did. Was it just originally just for your class? You just wanted your class to know? Well, that's how it started. Yeah. But, and then it went all the way up to here. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it'll, uh, it'll, it'll get out of here as well, which will, be, which will really be something. Just this is wonderful. It's but it's going, to, uh, it's going to cross borders. It's going it, to be... It gives you shivers and it's magical. And it's just like, it's, I don't know, I think it's just that part. And that's just a tiny little part of this whole story of the book. But just this, the afterlife of it, it's the aftermath of writing this book, is, I don't know, it's mind-blowing. Winnie, I just wanted to ask you the last question. When you started, you were obviously moved by Abu Bakr's story enough to say, I, I, we have to start writing this together. But like, did you vision board this or something? Like, was this uh, something that you said, uh, we will get this out? Or was this, is this exceeding your expectations as well? Absolutely it is. Um, and really, the part that I'm the most moved by, if we're going along theme, is how much Abubakar and the rest of his family opened up their lives to me and the trust that they put in me um, as I was stitching together their stories to create that narrative arc. Um, the entire time it was really a great sense of responsibility of I have to do good by them like you know and and as a writer constantly feeling like I'm not good enough for this job like to to honor and respect the beautiful way that this family lived their life. Um, it felt like a really great responsibility and for them to put that trust into me as my first book was um, really quite the journey and I'm just so glad to be sharing it with this amazing young man. And as you talk about their family, I just wanted to point out that he's too young to travel on his own yet. Uh, his mother is here with him. I just wanted to uh, thank her for being here and by his side as well. I hope you're being treated with some respect from the Canada Reads team. I know they're trying to feed you as much as possible and uh, make you feel warm. Um, but I, uh, I've, I've enjoyed already watching this process and I'm excited to see what Canada Reads holds for you. Thank you. All right, thank you all. Winnie thank Young, you. Abu Bakr Al-Rabi and Chuck Como. Thank, thank you. you guys.